Epoxy-coated rebar is the most viable and cost-effective corrosion protection system available today. Rapid and severe deterioration of bridge decks, parking garages, marine structures, and the high cost of repair or replacement has made it necessary to develop corrosion protection systems like epoxy-coated rebar. Epoxy coating is applied to reinforcing bars by a fusion bonding process. During this process, the epoxy powder adheres to the bar as a result of a heat-catalyzed reaction. This creates a cost-effective and durable corrosion protection system. In 1991, the Concrete Reinforcing Steel Institute established a voluntary epoxy coating plant certification program. The program's goal is to provide the end user with a quality product. The certification program establishes quality control procedures in the manufacturing process. Field personnel should be very aware that epoxy-coated rebar received at the job site has gone through considerable processing and testing prior to shipping. These tests assess coating thickness, coating continuity, and coating adhesion. Care for product quality doesn't end with the manufacturing process. It continues on to the job site. The important techniques for handling epoxy-coated rebar are receipt of material, storage, placing, final inspection and repair, and concreting. To ensure quality on arrival at the job site, the manufacturer has carefully loaded the epoxy-coated rebar onto the trailer with nylon straps and placed the bars on wooden timbers. However, before unloading a bundle of coated rebar, make certain that the tie-downs are secure. Check for proper padding and bar separation on the transport. Visually inspect epoxy-coated bars for damage. Check the coating on sheared ends. If you find uncoated or partially coated sheared ends, patch them and any other damage immediately. When unloading a bundle of coated rebar, you want to take care not to damage the epoxy coating. Unload as close to the area of placement as possible. It's important that the coated rebar doesn't come in contact with the bare metal or rough surface of the trailer because damage can occur. Use power lift equipment for unloading. Handling equipment should have protected contact areas. Use nylon slings or straps. Never use chains or bare cable to unload. If a bundle is long, use spreader bars or additional nylon straps in pickup points. This helps to prevent sagging of bundles which may cause bar-to-bar -bar abrasions. When storing the rebar at the job site, always use wooden dunnage or other protective cribbing between the ground and the rebar to prevent sagging. Epoxy-coated rebar shouldn't be stacked directly on the ground or on other unprotected surfaces. Remember to allow aisle space between stacks to enable easy access. Again, to avoid sagging, the rebar should be placed on a relatively flat or level terrain with timbers close together. If a relatively large quantity of materials has to be stored, bundles should be stacked with adequate blocking placed between the layers of bundles. And if rebar is stored in the elements outdoors for more than two months, cover the rebar with opaque plastic sheeting. Epoxy-coated rebar requires the same hoisting and handling techniques and precautions for placing as discussed for unloading. It requires more careful handling during placing than uncoated bar. Make sure all epoxy bars are lifted and set into place. Avoid dragging the rebar over other bars or any other abrasive surface. Use two workers to support and carry the rebar. Whenever possible, try to avoid walking on epoxy-coated rebar. By simply using common sense, you'll reduce the need for repairs. Use non-corrosive, non-conductive bar supports, such as plastic bar supports or metal bar supports coated with epoxy, nylon, or PVC to eliminate a potential source of corrosion and to avoid damage to the coated rebar. Tie wire, which is typically black and annealed wire, should be coated to minimize damage or cutting into the bar's coating and to avoid creating a direct electrical contact between intersecting bars. Many mechanical coupling devices are available for use with epoxy coated bar. Couplers should be pre-coated with fusion bonded epoxy coating. After you've installed the coupler, repair any damage to the coating. When welding splices, all welds and weld splice members must be coated with the same material used for any coated bar damage. 
Generally speaking, field cutting of epoxy coated rebar should be avoided and only permitted with specifier owner approval. Should you need to make field cuts, repair all cut ends immediately with the same patch material. Once the rebar is placed, a final inspection must be made to locate any unrepaired placing and handling damage. When making repairs to damaged areas, it's important that you use the following procedures. Follow the manufacturer's recommended mixing instructions when mixing two-part liquid epoxy repair compound. Mix the epoxy prior to use according to the manufacturer's recommended procedures. Use a wire brush to remove all rust and contaminants from damaged areas prior to applying the patch material. A paintbrush should be used to apply the patch compound to the cleaned damaged area. Avoid careless use of the patch compound on the rebar. Apply the epoxy to the area of damage with sufficient but not excessive overlap of the adjacent sound coating. When in doubt about whether an area needs to be repaired or not, always repair it. Allow patch material sufficient curing time as specified by the materials instructions before pouring the concrete. You should be aware that patch materials generally cure more slowly at lower temperatures and some require a minimum of eight hours to cure. When pouring the concrete, take caution when walking on the rebar not to drop anything such as hand tools or construction materials on the placed bars. To complete the pour, follow these guidelines. Set up runways for concrete buggies and pumping hoses and properly support them. Maneuver carefully to minimize damage to the coating and to prevent shifting of placed bars. When vibrating concrete, use a non-metallic or rubber vibrating head to minimize damage on placed epoxy coated rebar. Metal heads can cause damage to the coated bars within the concrete. Experience has shown that using common sense precautions and some extra care will eliminate most job site damage and ensure the corrosion protection benefits of the epoxy coated rebar. In conclusion, it's important to transport, handle, store, and place the materials carefully to avoid damage. Most importantly, remember that any damage that may occur during these processes should be cleaned and repaired. Further information regarding the installation, care, and handling of epoxy-coated rebar can be found in this reference guide for field handling of epoxy-coated rebar at the job site, which is available from the Concrete Reinforcing Steel Institute. Thank you.